Hey guys, Chaps here, and it's been a while since I've done a video like this. Today, I wanted to discuss Operation 5. More specifically, I wanted to discuss what I feel is necessary in order to consider a successful operation. I'm going to avoid doing too many specifics around predictions in this video solely due to the leaks that have been floating around. I won't get into the specifics on all of that, but I just don't feel that I can give it a proper and honest take on predictions. The only exception to this is River. Dana has said that Operation 5 will feature a remade map that wasn't featured in Gears 4. River is a pretty popular guess for this, but to take things further, River has been hinted at in the game files since Operation 4 launched. I thought this file was just there to troll people who were data mining, but with Dana saying there's a new remade map, I'm kind of wondering if the Coalition has just caved and made River for us. But back to the topic at hand, and that's what do we need to see in order for this to be a successful operation. In terms of maps, I think we're going to need at least 5 to help make up for the Lolan maps over this past year. We'll have at least that one remake. But then on top of that, I feel that we need at least two new maps, and then maybe a couple ports over from Gears 4. Everyone would obviously love more, but I think a minimum of five would bring a solid showing for Operation 5. Oh, and I guess maybe introduce one new 2v2 map? That would probably be good. I also want to clarify that based on what Dana said, we should expect somewhere between three and seven maps. He said that we'll be having more maps than any other operation, but then clarified to say that he meant more standard maps than any other operation. So that means more than two, or a minimum of three, and he also wouldn't have needed that clarifying statement if it was actually seven or more maps, so I feel like that caps it at seven. Let's just hope that it's on the upper end of that three to seven range. For characters, I was thinking nine minimum would be nice. Three cog and three swarm, or locust, at launch, and then another three characters mid-season. Recently, Dana said that there will be more than nine characters. That's great, and I feel that as long as they're decent characters, this will more than meet any fan's expectations. While we're still on this theme of what needs to be added, let's look at Horde and Escape. Operation 4 saw a new hive every three weeks. This wasn't great, but I feel it's the bare minimum. I think that's a solid low bar. On the other hand, we have Horde-specific maps, you know, the tile-based ones. With these, they basically launched them all within the first few weeks, and then left it stagnant for a while. Personally, I feel it would be better to do one map every four weeks to help spread it out. What do you guys think? Should they spread it out over the course of the operation to keep things feeling fresh longer? Or is that just drip feeding and they should put them all out right away? Either way, as far as the actual count goes, I think that one new tile-based map per month would be the minimum that I would expect. Another major aspect of Horde are the special events. Operation 4 had a pretty poor showing, but we've been promised more to come for Operation 5. I don't think that we necessarily need a weekly event, but having something special every other week probably would satisfy most. I think a minimum bar that I would set is one event every month in Horde. Imagine having one event per month, plus one new Horde map per month. If they stagger these, this could essentially lead us to having a new experience for Horde every two weeks. Let's take a minute though and look at some of the changes we would see, rather than just added content. Sticking with the Horde event stuff briefly, I would hope to see some of the events make their way into private matches. Perhaps events that we've seen multiple times now could work their way in. At minimum though, we really need a way to play the current special event on Master Difficulty. This could be via adding it to the custom lobby options, or by making it a matchmaking option. As it stands now, most hardcore players won't bother with events because they're much less efficient at earning cards. So yeah, let people play on Master for the special events, and maybe even throw in a few bonus cards to make it worth playing. In addition to this, I'm really hoping that we see a reworking of the lobby system for PvE. At a minimum, we should expect to see class perks added to the class selection screen. I also feel that we're long overdue for an update to the way in which we select cards. Gears 4 did it perfectly, and Gears 5 seems like they were almost intentionally making it worse. Oh, and speaking of cards, what about scrapping duplicate cards? If that is not here in Operation 5, it is a complete bust. These three items are basically a must-have in my mind. Some other nice-to-haves would be things around identifying teammate classes or cards in the lobby, and maybe something to better convey difficulty changes. Speaking of which, how about that Iron Man modifier for escape? We've been told that they're looking at removing that, and possibly replacing it with something else? If something isn't done to fix this in Operation 5, I see that as a really big miss. This is simply another must-have at this point. There's also been some talk around adding some new modifiers. While these are welcome, and I'm really hoping that we see some in Operation 5, I wouldn't personally consider this a must-have. Similarly, there's been talk of maybe adding at least one new boss. This is something else that I don't really feel is needed per se, but certainly more than welcome. 
I would say that some updated enemy AI or behaviors is needed though. Not necessarily new enemies, but something to give existing enemies a bit more variety in their behavior. Maybe they act a certain way or they have different weapons, just something like that. Okay, so now's kind of a big one. We all know that the decoupling of classes and characters will be coming in Operation 5. The big question though is, how many new classes will we be seeing? Honestly, in dealing with the Coalition, I think the more accurate question is, will we be seeing any new classes? Operation 4 really dropped the ball by only adding one class. With the decoupling that we're getting, I don't think a large quantity of classes is really necessary, but we gotta get at least one, right? I think I'm gonna set that as my bare minimum. If we don't get at least one new class in Operation 5, I think the PvE community is going to be pretty vocal in their displeasure. So let's transition away from PvE and talk a bit about PvP. Personally, I'm pretty happy with where things are right now. I don't feel that too much is needed here. We know some changes coming to the gear point system, and we know some quitter mitigation system is coming. Those are confirmed, and that's really the only must-have that I can think of. A nice-to-have would be something like updates to Gridiron or maybe some playlist reorganization. But honestly, I don't suspect they were going to be having much of an issue with the PvP sides of things for this operation. Let's just hope that the incoming changes function as well as intended. Transitioning again, let's look at the store and the tour of duty. We'll start off with the daily objectives. On a subjective level, these aren't balanced well at all. Whoever designed these needs to do some serious updates. But then on a more objective level, some are just wrong. Like in PvE, you get more stars for one heavy weapon kill than you do for two heavy weapon kills? Seriously? Balancing this type of stuff is a must. Some of it just isn't fun for fans. Other parts of it really makes you question what it means to be a AAA studio. I mean, come on, guys. Sticking with the tour of duty, how about those medals and tour rewards? A big complaint in Operation 4 was that almost everything was coin-based, and there weren't really those true chase items. The rate of earning coins in Operation 4 was generous, but honestly I'd like to see them scale that back a little bit and focus on the actual content. We've had discussions around this on the various streams that I've had on this channel, and Dana has even been involved in some of those discussions that we've had. If Operation 5's tour is another repeat of Operation 4 where it's all around coins, then that's another failure in my book. Oh, and there's just a quick note, let's hope that the medals are actually working properly this time. It's been a year and they still can't figure out how to add medals and have them work properly, it's kind of getting annoying at this point. Moving over to the store, there's really only a couple of things that I think are necessary. First off, we need a filter, or at least some better way of organizing the non-featured content. It's pretty bad right now, and if it doesn't get a decent facelift, then the team in charge of that has failed this update. The other aspect of the store is executions, and that's something that I haven't seen much discussion around, and I'm kind of wondering why we haven't been talking about it. Closer to launch, some of the coolest stuff that we've been getting were new executions. Like every week, people saw a new execution in the store and everyone was like, oh my god, this is amazing. We haven't really seen that much recently, and there's a lot of potential in those. I'm really hoping that we start to see these become more standard in the store. So kind of back on the topic of the organization of the store, I think that the UI needs a pretty significant upgrade in this title update. I've already mentioned the store and the PvE lobby organization, but what about the other aspects of the game? For starters, the menu system takes way too many clicks to get to some of the common places, but I really don't think that's going to change. One thing that I'm really hoping we see, but I doubt it, is an update to the menu options so that you can cycle through a list. Like if I'm scrolling through horde waves 1 through 50, once I hit 50, I should be able to press right again and have it cycle back to 1. It's the little things like that that go a long way. In talking about the UI though, what about the elephant in the room? How about that tour and social menu option? Many of you know that I'm not a fan of the UI designers for this game, but if these menus aren't updated, or at least acknowledged, then I will really have lost faith in TC on the UI front. The only thing I can think of as to what they were possibly doing was swapping the actual menus. Like, maybe they swap the triggers prematurely, but Operation 5 will swap the menu locations. That's the only thing I can think of. But then again, I think the tour makes more sense being left aligned so it would be on the left side of the screen, and the squad section makes more sense coming from the right. Like, in any lobby, the squad info is always on the right, so it makes sense to keep social on the right. Man, I, I don't know, it's just a mess, and they need to do something about it. So we have one last section of the game to cover, and that's the campaign. We've known for a while now that a Hivebuster campaign DLC is coming, and we've more recently learned that campaign is getting some serious updates with new difficulties, new skins, and modifiers. All of that is great, and it's certainly going to give this operation a leg up on some of the previous ones. That said, this all falls into the category of nice to have. What I'm trying to explore in this video are the must-haves. What does this operation need to do? In my mind, that answer is clear, and it's polish. 
Some of you may know my friend Schwartz. He and I always play the campaigns together. For various reasons, including bugs, this is the first Gears game that that wasn't the case for. Then Jess, Schwartz, and I did a hardcore campaign together. But guess what? It took us quite a while to get through. Sure, parts were hard, but every single session was plagued by bugs. When we stopped playing for the evening, it was never due to us being stuck due to the difficulty or us being bored with the campaign. Every single time, it was due to a game crashing or us being unable to progress due to a bug. Once we finally suffered through that full campaign, we're now on an insane run, and guess what? It's even worse. The campaign for this game has been pretty solid, but the bugs really take away from it. So that, that is what this operation needs to fix. All of this new stuff is wonderful, but if it's a buggy mess, I won't be playing it. Okay, so the last thing I want to hit on isn't actually the operation's content, it's the marketing of the operation. Surprisingly, Dana said that he felt Operation 4's marketing went pretty well, but if you ask most fans, it was pretty poor. I will say that the daily developer streams that they did last time went over really well. Well, that is, as long as they don't dodge questions as much. A teaser coming out two weeks before the Operation drops, and then a full trailer at the one week mark seems ideal to me. Once this trailer is out, the Coalition can have their week of streams, and they shouldn't feel that they need to hide anything. On sort of a similar note, the blog post that comes out detailing what's in Operation 5 should come out BEFORE the patch notes. There was so much left out of the last patch notes because they didn't want to spoil any content. So back to the theme of this video, a minimum requirement for me is just to handle the announcement better. That's a pretty low bar, but we'll see what they come up with. Ideally for me, I feel like it would look like November 3rd put out a teaser trailer, November 7th another teaser, and maybe something about E-Day, because you know, it's 14 years after E-Day, the launch of Gears 1. That'd be a pretty cool thing to, you know, hype up. We'll see what they do. Anyways, continuing on, we have November 10th it is all about tactics and the Series X launch. November 12th we can get a full trailer and operation description. This is where they can start their daily dev streams discussing stuff. The day before the operation launches, November 16th, put out patch notes and include all of the details in there. Then when November 17th comes around the next day, Operation 5 can launch. I don't know, that's just me looking at it and speculating as to what I think would be good timing. We just covered a lot in here, so let's recap a bit. What do I consider to be the bare minimum to deem this a successful operation? I'd say at least 9 characters, which is basically already confirmed. At least 5 maps, with at least 3 of them not being direct ports. At least 1 new PvE class. At least 1 new hive every 3 weeks. At least 1 horde event per month. And at least 1 horde specific map per month. If they accomplish that, I think I and many fans would consider this a successful update. Meeting the minimum requirements isn't usually enough though. So to take things a bit further, what else would they need to do in order to ensure this operation is truly a success? Well, they'd certainly need to ensure that the quitter mitigation system and improved gear point system actually works. Beyond that, they really need to do some stuff to prove that they're really listening to the community. Reduce the number of coin-based rewards in the tour in favor of more content. Fix up some of the really messy UI work. Finally fix some of the issues plaguing the campaign. And please, for the love of god, please have a decent marketing structure this time around. The last thing that I'll add to this list is simply polish. Come on, this game has been out for over a year now, and every single update seems to break the game in some way. This game has so many amazing things going on for it, but the simple lack of polish is really undermining this product's potential. So yeah, that's basically it. There's plenty more I'd like to see, and a few other things that I suspect we will be seeing. But in terms of hitting the bare minimum, I think this list should be a good starting point. Is there anything that I missed? What is your personal gauge on whether or not this is a successful operation? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I'll catch you all next time, and thanks for watching.